Hey everybody, this is GGB, and I crushed it, guys. I legitimately crushed it. You know what? I think yesterday was my best analysis, as quite possibly as a YouTuber, right? Because a lot of other people, if they're doing a college basketball upset of the day series, they'd be like, they'd look at it, and they'd be like, okay, we've got some, like, doing it by my rules, you got some uh, 21 Xavier, their favorite at home. You got Oklahoma State, their favorite at home over a ranked team. And you got Seton Hall, favorite at home over a ranked team. You just take the easy dub right there, right? Just take the easy, easy win and move on. I mean, it's not difficult to take a team that's favored, right? Well, in my smart little noggin here, I looked at those three games and I realized, number one, you have Providence playing. Providence is, in my opinion, the best team in the Big East right now. They're playing Xavier, which is a good, solid basketball team. Not I'm saying otherwise. But you're talking about the best team in the Big East. I'm going to take the best team in the Big East. Um, you had Marquette, who I think is the second best team in the East, playing, Big East, playing a lackluster Seton Hall team, if I'm going to be honest. And Seton Hall was somehow favored at home. I saw right through that. That was easy. Uh, and then Iowa State over Oklahoma State was, they, was also pretty simple because uh, it wasn't all that simple. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. It came close. I was almost wrong. But it turned out I was right. And then I was also debating taking Florida over Tennessee or Texas A&M over LSU. Thank gosh I didn't. I took the smart bet. I took VCU, which sat at 11-6 over number 25, Davidson. Davidson at home, favored by 4.5 points. I got the underdog. I got the win. Biggest ups of the day, 1.5 points for me. You know what that means? I sit at 3 points entering today, which means if I get this one of these games right, I will be sitting at... Over four, uh, either four points or over four points, I wouldn't even have to really stress about the rest of the week. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now, guys. But let's go over what happened yesterday. The big upset. I normally only go over conferences with an upset. And the Atlantic 10 VCU got a big W over top team Davidson, previously undefeated in Atlantic 10 play, right? Um, Davidson falls to six and one. Again, they're still in first place. It's not like anyone's really all that close. St. Bonaventure, one of their close, the clo teams that were closest to them, lost last night, which means George Mason is now in second place, which props to George Mason, not a team I thought would be in this race at all in the Atlantic 10. Suddenly a number two in the Atlantic 10. Big props to them. VCU is now tied for third place thanks to the W uh, with Dayton. So interesting things going on in the Atlantic 10, even though it's not a often talked about conference, there are some stuff going on there. Uh, so let's go over the games real quick we got today. We have to talk about three conferences, basically. So at 4 o'clock, we got number 11, Wisconsin, which sits at 15-3, and three, traveling to Nebraska, which sits at 6-13. and 13. Uh, Wisconsin favorite by 7.5 points on the Big Ten Network. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we got number 16, Ohio State, which sits at 12-4, and four, traveling to Minnesota, which sits at 11-5. and five. Um, Ohio State favorite by 6 points on ESPN. Um, at 8 o'clock, we also got number 6, Purdue, which is at 16-3. and three. Travel on I, which is at 14-5. and five. Purdue fair by 2.5 points on FS1. 8 o'clock, we got Cal, which is at six, six at 9-10. and 10, Traveling to number 7, UCLA, which is at 14-2. and two. Um, UCLA fair by 16.5 points on the Pac-12 network. Uh, 10 o'clock, we had LMU, which is at 9-8. and eight. Traveling to number 2, Gonzaga, which is at 15-2. Gonzaga fair by 28 points on CBS Sports Network. And at 10 o'clock, we're going to... We got Stanford Trump at, sitting at eleven and six, traveling to number fifteen USC, which sits at seventeen and two. USC fair by eleven points on FS1. So let's go over the Big Ten real quick, since we have two games going on there. Actually, three games going on there. A rather busy day in the Big Ten. We'll start with the first one: Wisconsin playing Nebraska. Obviously, with a win for Wisconsin, they move to seven and two, tied for first place in the Big Ten with Illinois. Again, the Big Ten is extremely interesting this year simply because of the fact you have so many great teams near the top. You look at it, you got teams like Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan State, all very close together, and Ohio State and Purdue not all that far behind. Um, so Wisconsin with a win, obviously he's tied for first place. Wisconsin with a loss falls to 6-3, and three, and that could really switch up things in the Big Ten. Now Wisconsin with a loss would obviously fall behind Michigan State, which is at 6 and and two. Now, if Ohio State, which also plays today, and Purdue, who also plays today, were to win those games, Ohio State would move into a tie for second place with Michigan State, and Purdue would move into a tie for fourth place with Wisconsin. So, big drop possible for Wisconsin if they are to lose this game. Now, 
obviously they don't fall as far. It, like they could, o they could also only fall to three with a loss, right? If they were to lose and Ohio State and Purdue were also to lose, then no big deal. Only drop one spot, right? Um, now, oh, Nebraska with a win obviously moves to one and eight. Not enough to be out of last place, but you picked up a conference win at least if you're Nebraska. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, and then you got Ohio State. Ohio State obviously playing today. I just went over what happens with a win for them. With a loss, Ohio State could fall somewhat dramatically, right? Oh, not somewhat Oh, a spot, right? If Ohio State is to lose this game, uh, they would fall to 5-3. and three. If Purdue was also to win their game against Iowa, they would move to fourth place. Uh, Ohio State would drop out of their fourth place spot, which fourth place is an ideal place to be if you're looking at it. If you're looking into the future of the Big Ten tournament-wise, Ohio State needs uh, four seeds great because you get a two-day bye. <sighs> Sorry. Um, obviously, with a win for Iowa, uh, actually, I'm sorry, let's talk about Minnesota. With a win for Minnesota, Minnesota would move to three and five and would pass both Maryland and Penn State. So, weirdly enough, if you're a Terrapin or Nittany Lions fan, you would actually be rooting for, I know this seems weird, but Ohio State tomorrow. Uh, so, that's, that's odd for both those teams, but you're going to be a somewhat sizable Buckeyes fan. Uh, with a loss, for Minnesota, they fall to two and six. Not quite as bad as Northwestern, which is at two and seven, but still not a great position. They're going to be about a full game behind the Nittany Lions and uh, Maryland. So that's not great. Uh, and then also for Purdue and Iowa, obviously Purdue with a win moves to six and three. You would move into you you could end up staying still, or again, you could move up as high as tied for third place with Wisconsin. Just depends on what happens. With a loss, you fall to five and four, which would drop you below Indiana. So if you're an Indiana fan, big hope for an Iowa upset. Now, if you're an Iowa fan, obviously you're going to be watching this. If you win this game, you'll be tied with Rutgers for, let me do the math real quick, eighth place. You'll be tied with Rutgers for eighth place with a win today. Uh, with a loss today, you fall to four and five. Again, not as bad as Maryland and Penn State's three and six. Um, so obviously, if you're a Rutgers fan, weirdly enough, you're probably going to be rooting for Purdue to beat Iowa. So Purdue, Iowa doesn't catch up to you. Um, and then also, if you're a Maryland or Penn State fan, you would love for Iowa to lose this game as well, just simply to keep them closer to you, right? Anyways, that's what's going on in the Big Ten today. Let's move on to the Pac-12 real quick. We got two significant games going on. Both of them likely not to land in upsets, but we'll talk about them nonetheless. Uh, Cal's playing UCLA. Cal, uh, UCLA, obviously, with a win. Uh, they move to 7-1 and take first place in the Pac-12 for now. Uh, with a loss, you fall to 6-2. and two, And depending on what happens against USC at 10 o'clock, you could fall to third place. Um... Now you're looking at it, uh, also Cal with a win would move to three and six. Let me do the math real quick. I believe that is better than two and five. Uh, two and five is a 28% win percentage. Cal with a three and six record, I believe would be a 33% win percentage. So yeah, if Cal is to pull off the ups, pretty massive upset, right? 16 and a half point dogs. But if Cal is able to pull it off, uh, you move out of third to last place and move to fourth to last place. So if you're an Arizona State fan, probably UCLA fan tonight, just so that you don't lose some ground on, uh, you don't have Cal a little bit close. You don't want Cal sneaking up on you. Um, and then you got Stanford playing USC. Obviously, USC with a win has a chance to overtake UCLA if UCLA is to lose against Cal. Now, if they win and Cal, uh, UCLA doesn't lose, they're going to stay in third place. Now, if they lost, they're still going to stay in third place. They fall to seven and three. Closest team to them is Oregon, which is at five and three. No matter what happens, they're not going to catch up to them, at least today. But if you're an Oregon fan, you would love to USC get a little bit closer here. Now, on the other hand, though, if you're an Oregon fan, you got to worry about sneaky old Stanford. Uh, right now, Stanford's in a tie for fifth place with Washington. But if Stanford was to block the upset in this game, they would move into a tie for fourth place with, as I said before, Oregon, right? So, it's an interesting scenario there for Oregon. I feel like I'd take the gambit if I was a fan. I'd be rooting for 
Stanford to pull off the upset over USC. I'm always shooting for the stars. If I'd be an Oregon fan, hoping for a Pac-12 championship under my belt, um, and you'd love USC to be a little bit closer for that to happen, I wouldn't be as worried about Stanford sneaking up on me. And then finally, we got one more game going on at 10 o'clock. We got the West Coast Conference playing. Gonzaga obviously sits at 4 Oh, If LMU would pull off the absolute biggest upset, quite possibly of the year, 28-point dogs, Gonzaga would have fall to 4-1, and one, which would be beautiful for almost every West Coast team. That's what they're hoping, is for Gonzaga to finally lose a game. But if Gonzaga was to lose this, obviously if they win this game, the same first players, right? They're 100% win percentage in conference, doing great, guys. But if you were to lose this game, BYU would take first place in the West Coast Conference, at least for now. LMU with a win moves to 3-3 three and three and would pass Santa Clara for sixth place in the conference where they lost you fall to two and four you're not going to fall anywhere uh you still got portland behind you which is at one and three and pacific and pepperdine who are just so bad that you're not even going to be a, a tad bit worried about it if you're lmu anyways that's all the games going on today if i had to pick an upset i do have to actually pick an upset um obviously you got to narrow it down to the big 10 ones right off the bat uh Maybe you had a chance with Stanford, USC, but let's be honest, LMU is not going to upset Gonzaga, and I find it very difficult to believe Cal's going to upset UCLA. Those two are very unlikely to happen. So if you narrow it down to the Big Ten teams, uh, obviously I don't think Wisconsin's going to lose to Nebraska. Wisconsin's one of the best teams in the conference, right? And while I do think the Big Ten conference is, I mean, they, they're known for being so deep, right? And I do think there is a lot to be spoken about that. For instance, Maryland, which is the 10th place team, can beat Illinois. I mean, there is some serious depth there, but Nebraska's not, like, I believe there's 13 teams in the Big Ten that can beat any of those other 13 on any given night. Nebraska's the one exception. They cannot win. They're bad. They're not a good basketball team right now. The Cornhuskers do not have a good team built together. Um, and you're talking about Wisconsin, who I think might be the best team in the Big Ten. I think there's an argument to be made. Michigan State, definitely. Purdue, definitely. And Illinois, definitely. But I think Wisconsin right now, as I've seen it, is the best team in the Big Ten. They play, like, more of a complete team. I think Purdue has more talent, but Wisconsin is more together. Does that make sense at all? Um, Ohio State is, I mean, they're a good team. Sometimes they're a bad team. Sometimes they're very unpredictable. Again, that wouldn't be a bad upset. And on most days, I would take that upset. But I, I just got to go Iowa over Purdue. Iowa has looked like a really solid basketball team. Again, 14-5 and five overall. They look like a possible tournament team. Um I, I know it doesn't show it in the Big Ten standings, obviously four and four, um, but I they do look like an honest big uh honest tournament team. So I think I think I think if I I'm gonna pick an upset, it's gotta be the Hawkeyes. I think the Haw Hawkeyes have a decent shot <sighs> Sorry, of uh beating Purdue at home. Everybody this is GGB, San Adios Amigos, and go Hawkeyes.